Hello friends, welcome back to another episode on UFF Learning Series. Today's topic is UFF Scaffolding. If you have been following through this discussion well, you probably have noticed that the application that I have been creating so far as a demonstration, it follows over a simple architecture. It starts with an index.html followed by an index.js file. I mean to say the index.js I gets loaded from this index.html file itself. And from index.js, I'm loading a view is an XML view with I am just attaching a controller called app.controller. So let's parallelly check our project. So this is our index.html. Here you can see the module that I'm loading, which is nothing but my index.js. From here I'm just loading my app view. This is my app view. And here in this app view, I am just linking my controller over here in the controller name. I'm just mentioning the controller. And in the controller folder, you can find the respective logic that I have just you know, written for my application. Now, the application which you can see over here is the simple thing, but in a productive application, the things be different and you will get into a lot of more files and folders structure that you need to create for your requirement. So this is nothing but the creating you know, kind of a house where we put a lot of you know structures and we organize those uh, things well to make sure that house buildup makes easy and it's you know maintainable. So similar way, the scaffolding also same thing about our application structure and organization of the files and folders. But as I said, the application, the way we have defined so far, it's pretty simple and demonstration purpose and POC purpose seems okay. But if we just do kind of a production build up and manually you need to arrange everything, it looks a bit tedious. So we need a solution through which those kind of a file and folder structure uh, can be created easily and it will expedite our development and improve our development experience. Various ideas are there uh, to develop your web application. I'll be using VS Studio Code uh, as well as Business Application Studio uh, in, my, uh, in my overall learning series. In this particular tutorial, I'll be using predominantly VS Code as well as a command line tool to generate the you know, UFF uh, scaffolding. So, and also I'm planning to create an application uh, using Northwind API and just to show that how fast and easy you can create uh, kind of a with no code and low code kind of a concept that the entire UFF application you can build from the template. Now, with the, this studio code, if I just want to show, I'll be using two extensions and I also recommend you to install the same. One is called SAP UI web extension and the other one is called Fury Tools extension pack. Okay. So if you go to the extension of your studio code, you can you might notice these two things are already installed. SAP UI web extensions and extension pack. So extension pack will basically install some other dependent uh, extensions uh, along it. Let's start with creating a fresh application from scratch. So for that you have to go to view after of course installing your extensions as I explained. You will click on this common palette and you will just click on called Fury. Now you have an option called open application generator. So if you click on this, it will take little time but it will give an option to create or rather show certain uh, templates. Once it's open, you will see there is something called application type. It has called Fury Elements by default. You just select it from SAP UI Freestyle. We'll create Fury Elements later on. So for the time being, I'm just selecting UI5 Freestyle. Now I can see a various options that I can select from. So let's pick this one SAP UI5 application and just go for next. Now it will ask for the data source and service selection means any APIs or certain things that I need to link to. Now I just create a fresh kind of scratch. So I'll select none. I don't need to attach any data source. So let's move on to the view name. You can put any view name. I'm calling it as, uh, as an app view. Now for simplicity, I'll not make this application deployed to either backend or cloud so I'm just selecting it as no. I don't want to put any sort of a launchpad configuration for this particular simple application. So I said no and configured any advanced options a kind of app router and all I don't want to do that. 
I just put it as default no click on finish and now you see just fraction of seconds it's all all the scaffoldings will be created uh, in my uh, you know the left pane and I can just you know expand it you can see all things are created successfully and now it installs certain dependencies uh, I'll talk about later uh, episodes uh, when I'll discuss more on UI5 web tooling let's wait for some time looks like it all installed now you'll see this node modules gets created and it's just uh, shows like what are the dependent node modules that are required for this application to run successfully let's quickly check how to run this application so for that you need to go to package.json and you'll find a lot of different script tags so one of the strict script tag is called start so that the script that we need to run so go to terminal and we need to go to this particular project called my first app so cd my first app and now we are ready to run the command called npm run start so this is the way we need to run this application what will happen it will run this particular script and it will just you know start running my application locally beautifully local host 8380 I can see my application will be started running it's a simple application nothing there just kind of a canvas now I can create my UI controls and input whatever fields I want and to make my application started so how easy and faster the application scaffolding is generated by using this template now let's little understand that what is the structure and what are the different folders and files that's been created so far we know that we have an index.html over here and this is our index.html that's been put under a folder called web app which is under the root folder called my first ui5 app so this is my project now this index.html is actually calling index.js in our demo application but here it's calling something called component.js but how this link up is done let's say quickly so this is my file and here's something a concept called component support that you can find over here okay on init it loads this component support so it's a declarative way of doing the same activities that we have been do, you know, doing so far but you know specifically calling this index.js file but it's a declarative way we are saying like hey call component.js file and here is my component.js file so this is the file which has it's it has certain concepts called metadata and metadata is containing something called manifest which is a json type file so what is this manifest let's quickly check this one it's a json file it's called the application descriptor which contains the application specific certain information so here is certain you know version then the name and the id and so many different other uh, information important uh, details that you can find over here if you just go a little down you will see something called models IH name, which we have you know discussed last time. So this is the binding of this you know IH resource model with our application. Perfect. There are certain routing concepts which I want to skip at this moment. But here the interesting thing is this manifest is having a section called root view, which calls my app view. So this is the view folder. Let's quickly check and this is the app view which is linked to so same concept from index.js uh, is equivalent to my component.js now similar way app view we have linked or attached my app controller and this is the controller you can find over here there are so many other folders like utils models those things are there but that we can you know take care of little uh, later and there are certain ui5 yml then package.json so many other concepts are also there that we'll also talk about more when we just you know uh, discuss on way of web project so let's figure out how we can you know make our application link to an api or the northwind api which is a free a kind of a service that we can now use in our application so let's do that now the application is already running now to stop this application you have to click on Control c okay now let's create one more application but this time it will be a northwind application so go to view common palette similar way application generator and it will again give me an option for selecting the templates 
So now let's maximize this one. So now I have to select that SAP Wi-Fi freestyle. So this time what I'll do, I'll select a Fury Rockless kind of an application. So let's click on next. And this time I'll provide an API details. So let's find that Northwin service API in the meantime. If I search with Northwind service order, so I'll get this one. If I just click on that, this is kind of a Northwind service that we get. So copying it. Let me use a plugin. If I just put over here and click on go, it will show me the different orders under a customer. So what I'll do, we'll just remove all those details now and we'll just have only till SBC. And if I click on go, so this is the kind of a metadata that you can see for this service. And we have lots of collections, like categories, customers, employees, and so on. So let's get order details or maybe something called, maybe I can select product also as a collection. So now what I'll do, I'll, I'll take first uh, this one, right? This till over here, this is my API details. Copy it, go to our application, select connect to a system or maybe connect an over data service. I'll select the second one. We'll just keep this URL. So just little wait and it will just, you know, pull all the collections from this service. It's already pulled. Click on next. Now we have to select the collection that we are interested. So we can select the products, for example, and certain key that we need to put. So you can change definitely later on. I'm just, you know, uh, randomly selecting some fields. So this is my project attributes. And click on finish. So what will happen? It will create a project in my a root folder called SAP Web 5. The application got created. Uh, let me open my uh, North Queen product application. Same architecture and scaffolding. If you go to uh, something called manifest.json, you will see some API that been linked over here. Here is the service details that's linked to that we have mentioned over there. So from here, the collections all will be pulled. So now how to run it? Simple concept. As you have seen last time, we have to run this start command, right? And we'll be seeing that application getting all the data from our Northwind API. So let's head over to this application post, Northwind. And now call npm run start. What will happen? Uh, start, right? It will now run this application locally with the local post and port details. Let's wait for some time. Yeah, local host and it's right so it started this if everything works fine i'll see my information you see automatically it's pulling the product name and certain subplot details and all information and it automatically navigates to the detail page also right that's awesome i didn't write any single piece of coding but my application is all working uh, and i'm able to fetch data uh, from an ODA service right it's a simple gate call it's happening that's pretty really fine and uh, the crude operations and all we'll be doing little later uh, episodes uh, so stay tuned so let's also now check how we can create application from a common line tool right that will be also interesting and that because the future is all cli based right so we'll also get to know how easy it will be uh, even from common line interfacing tool we can create a complete web application now to generate application from online interfacing there is a concept called the human generator so human generator is kind of a scaffolding uh, it's a generic scaffolding system so using this is an npm model so using that uh, you can uh, you know use uh, human to create your UFA application now to start with uh, you can go to this documentation to see some common use case where you can uh, use this human generator now to getting started, you need to install this generator Yo uh, globally because this minus G is for global. So you can install this uh, in your computer from the command line. 
and human generator will be installed through system so now if we just run yo and version then it will offer the current install version that is uh, available in my computer it's 4.3.0 now it said it's kind of a human is a generic uh, scaffolding system so the cps offered something called generator ecy5 so this one can be it should be installed along with yo and then uh, from this yo command we can access this ecy5 generator so that is something uh, we can do that so currently i have already done this uh, stuff so in my computer it's already installed just to save some time so now if I just run the command yo, I'll see some available generators that in my system I can use from. So you can see something called uh, easy Y5 and uh, Y5 for library, SAP theory. So certain, you know, things are already uh, available. So, so now uh, with an arrow key, I can select whichever things that I'm looking for, right? So I'll be just running uh, easy Y5. So I'll be going for the web project. Now I have to give a project name. Uh, just wait for a moment. So yeah, so it's kind of a my Wi-Fi app that's currently I'm just want to go with. Yeah, so that is the application default. I just want to go with my Wi-Fi app. Any namespace, I don't want to go with any namespace. Now there is certain web server that you can select. So it can be a static web server or anything like. So I just want to go with a static web server. The view options will be four, but XML is preferable always because it's statically designed. So go with XML. Uh, Open UI five? No, we want to we want to go with SAP UI five brother because that is what our primary goal. So select SAP UI five. Uh, new directory? Yes, of course I want to create. Otherwise it will be just stored uh, under SAP UI five. So I want to create a new one. So select Y. JavaScript code access libraries. I just want to set as no. I don't need. And then it will create everything. And it creates my application. Uh, oh, I didn't. I selected namespace as default. So it took pom dot something. So it, it will take certain time. It's generating everything. Node models all dependencies is loaded. So let's minimize this one and open this one. Uh, so the folder structure is a little different. It is don't it doesn't have a uh, web app directly, uh, but it is having web app under UI module. So now it's complete. So let's get into the folder called CD com dot something. So this is the, my application. And to run this one, let's go to package.json, same concept. And here is that start command. So npm run start. And my application should should start locally. Okay. So let's see. Uh, yeah, it's giving an error. It's saying that some address is already in use. The port that it is using, uh, 35729. Okay, so, so what you can do, you can just go to this uff.yml and here you can just change it to 8, 4000 maybe. And now save it and then run uh, npm run start. Now it will not be complaining, I guess. And it will just open the application. Uh, and open the syntax html so let's see yes it's working now yeah this application is working fine looks like and it's a blank canvas and now you can put your controls on top of thanks for watching i hope the discussion was helpful so yeah stay tuned with me and in the series also subscribe my channel if you have not done yet and we'll again connect back with a different topic on this learning series goodbye till then